Positive heads out there. Thanks for tuning your beautiful brainwaves into another episode of the Positive Head Podcast, where we are firmly convinced that creating success and happiness is rooted in understanding the ultimate nature of reality and the fact that as human beings, we are all immensely powerful fractals of the one and only source consciousness which creates and animates all things. After years of exploring this awe-inspiring truth on this podcast, I'm super, super excited to announce that we are now going even deeper down the rabbit hole on the new late-night-style consciousness-elevating talk show called Optimistic, which features none other than you, the listeners. Optimistic is taped out of the epic, spaceship-esque, eight-bedroom property we call the Mystic Manor that myself and the rest of the Optimistic crew now navigate reality from in Venice Beach, California. And you are invited to come experience a Mystic Manor Immersion Week with us. During your week-long stay, you'll enjoy unique workshops, chef-prepared meals, one-on-one time coaching and consulting with me, and even co-creating magic with me as a guest on both Optimistic and an episode of the Positive Head Podcast. When I started this, my aim with these immersive retreats was to facilitate the ultimate spiritual upgrade and tune-up, so to speak, uh, for our guests while providing them with one of the most memorable experiences of their lives. And I'm happy to say that as of this recording, every guest at the end of their trip so far has told me that they have had a profound and transformational experience at the Mystic Manor and that they definitely want to come back. All that being said, we only have a limited number of spots available between now and next July. And as of this recording, about half of those spots are already filled. So if there's any part of you that is screaming, yes, I want to come, I feel like I need to be there, go now and book a slot with me to discuss how we can put our heads together and make it happen at calendly.com forward slash talk with Brandon. I know for some people, there is also that little voice in their head saying, why not? You know, I can't get off work. I can't afford it and on and on and on. But, you know, really, Henry Ford, I think, said it best. Whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. And I'm confident that where there's a will, there's a way. And I'm personally committed to doing everything in my power, including discounts and payment plans to get you here if it is something that truly feels like a huge yes for you energetically and like you're meant to be here. Once again, the link to book time to discuss with me is calendly.com forward slash talk with Brandon. That's spelled C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y dot com forward slash talk with Brandon. All one word, of course. And uh, yeah, book in some time and look forward to seeing you soon here at the Mystic Manor. All right, all you positive heads, on this week's Soul Share episode, I'm very excited to have Josh Trent here with me on the show. Josh is the founder of Wellness Force Media, and today we are actually sitting face-to-face here in the Mystic Manor, and we're going to do a joint interview slash co-host session, and super excited for this. What's up, Josh? Welcome What's to the show, up? Mark. Thank you for having me. This is cool. I've never done a show with dark chocolate sitting in lotus position right next to a guest or a host, however well, you want to hey, describe it. you know, it's the first, <laughs> the first time for everything, and uh, we're taking it to a whole new level. We're here in a spaceship after all, so... This is a spaceship. It you know, people haven't been to the Mystic Manor. Or just for everyone listening, we are sitting next to probably the world's greatest bathroom. <laughs> it's got a 20 square foot floor shower with like almost like a positron electron transfer structured water shower head. How did you Something. know? I didn't even tell you that. I read, the, just, blue. I read the spiritual blueprint when I walked through the door, man. <laughs> Oh, man, this is going to be fun. As you can tell, Josh uh, has a Wellness Force podcast. Um, is doing all kinds of interesting, fascinating things in the world. And we decided, you know what, let's just do, instead of interviewing each other sort of separately on each other's show, let's just do like a tag team. Like, I ask you a question, you ask me a question, we 
talk about whatever comes up. Yeah. And I would like to be very stick with my very um, very normal. All my my listeners know I go to the the typical opening cliche question, and yeah. I would like to still continue with that. Um, cliches can be really cliches fun. Cliches are good, man. Cliches yeah. are good. I don't want to disappoint too much. I don't want to throw them too much. You know, too much change and people get freaked out. So. Here's the question. You're in an elevator. Mm-hmm. The woman next to you looks over, says, what's your passion? You have 10 floors to answer. What do you say? Ooh, <clears throat> my passion is discovering why we're here, this physical and emotional intelligence so we can live well. That's the whole point. Uh, this is why this woman and I are in an elevator because we're going somewhere, hopefully, that we enjoy or we're mm-hmm. about to see somebody that we love or we're about to do something that brings us some kind of fire, some kind of <sighs> increased breath in our body oh. or something, right? Oh. So that's why I'm here is to dilute the toxicity of the planet by sharing my journey with discovering physical and emotional intelligence. Ding. It's the 10th floor. Yeah. That, I think <laughs> you, you almost entered the Willy Wonka elevator <laughs> where you shoot into the stratosphere and uh, let's hope it wasn't you and your uh, soon to be ex wife on the way up to the yeah. divorce. No, that case, doesn't. That doesn't but that feel would good. still be an improving your life. True, right? True. So it's all hold, it's all perspective. It's would still yeah. hold true. Okay, yeah. you're, you're safe. All right. Yeah, you're in. Well, safe. can I flip it back to you? Oh, the 10 second. Has oh. anybody ever flipped it back to you? I think they probably have, and I who knows what I said. This is going to be a totally non conventional oh. show, you guys. Mind blowing. So you're in the you're in the elevator. Okay. You got 10 floors. Okay, and uh, she doesn't know you, but mm. she's like, man, this guy's kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she might even want to date with me. So I possibly. Really, yeah, yeah. I gotta yeah. think. Keep that in. If the hair is on point (laughs) which is always questionable (laughs) with this do um okay what is my answer what what is uh what what hmm, my answer my passion is helping people to shift their perspectives to create more magic in their world you know helping people to ease the pain of existence by understanding the ultimate nature of reality and what's going on and how empowered and empowering them to um create positive change in their life yeah Wow, that's, that's a great it. elevator ride right there. It is. I think we got like, God. I mean, all in all, we probably hit 20 floors between the two of us. You went See, a little over, I went a little under. No, We're Brandon, safe. this is why I was stoked to do this dual podcast with you because I thought, man, there's so much natural, organic overlap without us even trying. I got to spend uh, two days here, really. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. A, a presentation in the evening and then hanging out with you and your crew here. And damn, you got something special. Oh, thanks. You man. know, and there's a lot of community here. And, and, and this is a pivotal time in human evolution where if, if we really fortify community, I think we have an amazing chance yeah. for humanity to really wake up and for consciousness to prevail. But without community, we ain't got shit. Yeah, it, it is. Um, it's so true. One of the first books that I ever read in, you know, spiritual centric uh, books was Celestine Prophecy. Have you ever read this book? I've heard of it. Okay, so yeah. it's a fiction book based off of, you know, real principles um, or what the author perceives to be real principles, and I tend to agree with. And he basically talks a lot about how the, the future, and this book was written like mid-90s or whatever, but the future is all about us coming together in groups, working de- together in groups, understanding when, how to read energy, when it's a moment for Josh to speak up, when it's his moment. He's got the, the, the sources is coming through, and he's the inspired one, inspiration, in spirit, in that given moment. And everyone in the group learning to sort of share, you know, share the, the floor, if you will. There's no yeah. one hierarchical leader that is, uh, you know, the, the dictator. Rather, how do we come together? How do we read the energy collectively and understand how to, to create from this underlying premise that we're all extensions of the same thing? It's, you mm. know, there's only one of us in the room. And it's called The Celestine Proph- Prophecy. C- Celestine Prophecy. Who wrote it? Do you remember the James author? Redfield. This is a book that gets to go everywhere it, then it, it yeah, um, yeah it's a bit it was a lot of people i know have read it it's you know this popular. reminds me of buckminster fuller he talks about this biotensegrity model and mm. even all of his structures that he built and um he was one of the earliest radical thinkers when it came to real synergy and community yeah i'm sure you've heard of oh yeah, yeah. Fuller. totally and i remember interviewing uh daniel schmachtenberger from, oh, from yeah. neurohacker okay which I've, is i've know, heard i've had it, Several people on your recommend radar. that I should have You him guys on. would have a tennis match, yeah, man. Yeah. Anyways, um, I, it brought me back to that because he had that ageless wisdom, almost like uh, Alan Watts, where that they, they're both no longer here anymore. But yet, gosh, I feel so pulled to these messages when I hear them from these men. Uh, and it's really special right now. We live in a special time where we can talk through a microphone that goes to outer space, that comes back down to people's ears. 
And we get to change people, help change ourselves while just living our life while it's recorded. Do you ever realize it's that? It's wild. Do you realize yeah, how special really, that is? It really is. I mean, it, you know, our whole lives, you know, both of us doing podcasts, it's like such a big part of our lives are, are utilizing this technology and tools. Yeah. And, it, you know. Ten years ago, I, I guess podcasting was probably still around. Maybe I don't I even think know. You kind of just started. Yeah, maybe just started. Can you imagine I'm, if you started ten years ago? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Not that you're like lacking in the d- podcast department now with a thousand episodes. Well, you yeah. know, yeah, I'd have ten thousand. That's maybe. right. Yeah. No, actually, let's take that back. I started about five years ago. You as well, right? Yeah. Uh, Twenty July, twenty fifteen. Um, that the, was May twenty fifteen. So, oh, cool. The yeah. genesis of this goes to your synchronicity story that you always ask your people. Always. And uh, can we go there now. Is that cool? Uh, yes. Okay. So <laughs> now, hold on. Twist my arm. All right. Okay. Good story of, of inspirational story, I guess. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's a deep synchronous moment and it, and it gives me chills every time I feel into it because man, if I look back on it, it's clear. But in that moment, mm-hmm. it didn't seem clear at all. Right. And actually it was like gut wrenching and emotional right. because I, I was a personal trainer for 10 years. And after that time, um, you know, I really wanted something different. Like I wanted something else because I was tired of counting reps for clients. And not that there's anything wrong with personal training. I just, as David Dita calls it, I was like done with a purpose and I was waiting for my next purpose. Right. So, you know, I left the training industry. I still wanted to help people. And uh, I really just got to this place where I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I went to corporate America. Committed spiritual suicide. Okay. <laughs> like made, made good money selling um, endurance sports software, like the, the techno, sports technology industry. But every morning I would wake up, man, and I would feel like just so uncomfortable yeah. in my body. Right. Like I just, I knew there was more to life. And um, I got the gift of being fired after three years of like getting sales MVP awards. And, you know, you, ever, have you guys, have you ever been good at something that you don't like? <laughs> I, I've broken so, sales records every place I ever worked that I didn't yeah. run or own, you know, as an entrepreneur. And I understand so, so strongly what you're talking about. Like, just not feeling like, uh, okay, There's great. I can do this really well. And it just doesn't do it for me. It's not, you know, yeah. it doesn't feel like I'm, I'm reaching my fullest potential at all, even though comparatively I'm excelling. You know? Well, there's nothing wrong with helping other people build their dreams as long as it either overlaps with your dream or you believe in their dream. Right. But just being in a current position in a cubicle, I call it death by cubicle. Mm. And there's no, there's nothing wrong with a cubicle if your soul is connected to what you're doing or yep. if you actually love or enjoy what you're doing. Who cares if you're in a cubicle? It doesn't yep. matter where you are, yep. you know? But for most people, I, w- I would make a blanket statement. For most people, I feel like um, people go to cubicles where their soul dies. Yeah. This is a soul death arena for most of us. And that's what happened to me, man. So when I got the gift of being fired, I'll never forget this. I'm driving home. I'm feeling exhilaration. I'm also feeling fear. Sure. I'm feeling happy. I just like a, really, that was like, I feel like the beginning of a hero's journey, like totally separated from what I knew, safety and security and having a paycheck all the time. Then I got to this place where I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I got home. I was with a a woman at the time, and we ended up going to a sound healing ceremony. And um, this is five plus years ago. So I I had never really explored sound healing at all. I didn't even know what it was. And she was like, why don't we go to this? Next thing I know, they put the crystal bowls on my body, and I'm laying there, and I'm crying. Not the kind of cry where it's like, "Ah, ah," (laughs) but the kind of cry where there's just water coming out. Uh And I just felt like this energy in my body that I had never felt before. Wow. And I was driving home and I pulled out the phone and I said, film me. Her name was Amy. And I was like, film me, Amy. And so I said, I'm going to launch this podcast once and for all because I'd been hesitant to launch it. I'd been in fear for about three years. Wow. In fear. Who am I to have a voice? Who am I to speak my truth? Who am I? Who am I? Same old story. All these limiting beliefs that are possibly inherited from my great grandfather. Who the fuck knows? Right, right. So I get to this space where I... I did 10 minutes of recording. I said, I'm going to reach a million people more. I'm going to help people through wellness technology and I'm going to coach people online. And I looked back four years later and that's exactly what happened. Wow. That's exactly what happened. Bam. And uh, I'm even feeling the emotion of it right now because I'm like, I didn't know that you and I were going to be sitting here, but yet looking back, I'm like, it's perfectly clear how I got here. Right. And so it makes me wonder what are the other things in life that are so bubbling up with synchronicity and bubbling up for my attention that maybe my ego doesn't give attention to, right. you know, because I'm stuck in a loop or I'm just not, not aware of my surroundings enough. Yeah. So with that said, like my discovery of emotional intelligence and what it really is and my ability to feel things in my body 
because that's where I live. That's my quest because that's what got me here. So I'm just going to honor whatever it is that got me here yeah. as I move forward. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, you know, one of the things that I, I think of all the time with this conversation, and my listeners have heard it many times before, the story, I had a woman show up at my house one time, and she um, she came over with someone else. I didn't know her. She was just like a friend with her, and we got talking, and she started sharing her near-death experience story with me. And she was, you know, swimming, you know, somewhere out swimming, you know, uh, and she got to a point where she couldn't hold herself up anymore she was too far from land it was like not a good scenario no one was around to hear her screams or anything like that and she started just drowning she went down and she's like okay this is it you know next thing she knows she's having an experience being on the other side and she is there and there's a voice uh saying to her well welcome back you know um you're here and you did everything you wanted to while you were still there right you went for it, right? You took the risks, you know, right? Kind of in a prodding way. And of course she hadn't. And um, she's like, no, I didn't really. And then next thing you know, she's back. Something's pulling her to the surface and she can swim again. And she makes it and, you know, to tell the story, right? What and pulled her <clears throat> to the surface? She doesn't know. Oh. Something was like pulling her by the arm to the surface. Oh. She was way under. And um, so... You know, what I I think of whenever I hear that is with anyone out there listening, it's like when you understand how safe you actually are, the net that exists, like we are we are these eternal beings that your survival is guaranteed. So playing it, it doesn't mean go and be foolish and do take some dumb risks that's, you know, not thought through in any way, shape or form. Um, But, you know. As a general premise, I'm going to go for it. I'm going. I'm going big or going home. I'm go- I, at the end of the day. I'm completely safe and supported. I can't lose. This is a. This is you're in. A, you know, you're in a holographic reality that you didn't come to sit on the sidelines and play. You know, I think of another friend who we. Used to, this person he had inherited a lot of money. He was probably. 25 at the time, young guy, he had inherited a ton of money. You know, his whole life was like about protection. Like he, I remember crossing the road with him and he would, he was hiding behind the street pole at the, at a cross section. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, well, what if that car runs off the road and comes over here and hits us? Wow. And I'm like, wow, dude. Like, you know, just, just this extreme protective mode. And, you know, for me, I've come to the conclusion. It's like, if, if I really want to feel alive, I've got to be able to take those risks and stretch and be willing to go for something a little bit more. And a lot of times we'll get the push like you did yeah. and learning how to read, you know, those messages like, OK, something just kind of pushed me, push me out of the nest and and start flapping. Dude, I remember interviewing Gay and Katie Hendricks three years ago, and he was like, sometimes the universe will tickle you with a feather mm-hmm. and it'll give you a little guidance. Sometimes your ass will get hit with a sledgehammer. <laughs> and when we get hit with a sledgehammer, um, it really hurts yeah but it's like from that place of pain and getting knocked down to the knees where truth can be built from right it's almost like we have to let shit burn to the ground sometimes yeah in order to really live life true live life well have you had a moment like that where you had shit burn to the ground i i mean i had a moment last week where i <laughs> walked into a door we- that's true that's true smash my head open like okay what is being told to me here you know so all in all, my my journey has been probably less tumultuous in a physical, like, you know, I think of Vajra, who uh, has curated all the visionary art here in the space, in, in the Mystic Manor, and also uh, was a guest on the show recently. And He, he had, made this, he, this geometry here on the wall? Not this particular one you're looking at, but a lot of it downstairs, okay. or in the next room, even, uh, on my okay. wall. And so he has, there's a picture, if you, when you go downstairs, remind me to show it to you, of a of a guy staring up at a fire and the fire has a face and it's like it's this little man and this giant fire and he realized it was prophetic when he was standing and all his art was burning down all his work was burning down and he stood in front of this big fireball that was happening when he was trying to get it out and he's like oh my gosh this is my painting you know wow. and um so i think uh in some cases like his people are actually go as far as well everything burning to end. Look, I'm, maybe you've talked about it on your show before, but I have to know, uh, you you came from a corporate structure. Mm. You came from the travel company, right? Yep. Not everybody can do that. Right. <laughs> Not everybody can like, and I think you were even like Forbes top 1000 or something. 569. To okay. Be so that's better than a thousand. Inc. actually. Yeah. A- and um, to come to this world, yeah. the world where there's spirituality and 
like Alan Watts calls it, prickles and goo. Like you guys are goo here, man. <laughs> you guys are gooey. It's extra know? gooey around it, here. It's gooey. Like, <laughs> I, please give us the richness of that story mm, because quite a story. so many people that earn money in like a tension way. Mm-hmm. Um, first time I met you, we, we were having dinner and mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, I was sharing with another friend of mine. He was like, yeah, I built my money and I built my empire with a white knuckle and trying to take advantage of as many people as I could. Yeah. And now I've afforded the space for me to be at peace and, and mm-hmm. understand what spirituality really is. Yeah. But I just feel like maybe for you, I mean, with, with this, what you're doing and the way you're hosting and just who you are, I think that was always in you. It just feels like it was always there in some way. It was. Uh, I, I definitely had the insight. I mean, going way back, I had a vision of creating like a music distribution platform that would ultimately form a virtual community that would then turn into a physical community and very much in line with sharing abundance and so forth. And I had set out to do that maybe 2009, 2010. And I actually launched this platform and it started growing and I didn't have, I was doing it bootstrapped and not a lot of resources. And I hit a wall financially and I was so frustrated. I'm like, I need to manifest more abundance because yeah, I need it to, to grow and, and, and do the things I want to do in the world. Mm. And that's when I was led to, you know, I, I didn't uh, have any particular affinity for travel related business or anything like that. You mm. know, um, circumstances led me to see a big need in, um, in that space. I, you know, set out to uh, explore my ideas conceptually as like, okay, this could be a path for me to create um, more financial abundance that I can then go and do uh, good things in the world. So it was always like a means to an end for me was yeah. the, the vision of that. And so I, you know, 2010 or so I, I launched, uh, that company and it, it, the ideas that I was testing were testing yeah. really took off. What really was it worked. called? Resort chair, resort chair, resort chair. Cool. And so we worked with like, um, timeshare owners who had too much ownership that they couldn't use. And then we would do rental through like booking.com and things like that. And so it sounds we, like a travel Airbnb or something. It was something like that. Yeah. I was yeah. like, it, yes, it was at the same time we were figuring things out and starting out posting ads on Craigslist. Airbnb was there scraping Craigslist, creating their platform, you know, and I'm like, uh, I think they had the better idea, <laughs> but, um, you know, so yeah, we were, um, we, we grew from, you know, me living on my friend's couch at that time to, you know, having hit a rough spot just beforehand to, you know, hundred plus employees being 569th fastest growing private company in the U S in 2015 got to, uh, a, an exit, you know, um, and it was, it was wild. Um, yeah. I got to the, to the, this exit, we got an offer to be bought out for $30 million within 12 hours of that. We lost 90% of our revenue well, booking.com and this, the biggest timeshare developer in the world got together and formed a partnership that had specific verbiage that booking would no longer work with us. So it blew that deal up. Then my uh, partners, two partners I'd brought in that, you know, one of which was a really close friend. Um, I, you know, uncovered that they were trying to steal what was left from me and my brother. And it was like, it was like a drama. It was like a script out of a movie. Like, yeah. okay, you can't make this stuff up to five year plus to get to this big offer within 12 hours of that to <sighs> lose 90% of your revenue to, I mean, I can feel the flames of it burning to yeah, the ground. Hey, here is my the flame question. story. <laughs> That's a great, yeah. Thank you yeah. for tying that back together. Oh my God. So, but I learned a lot from it and I, and I think there was a lot of karmic things that needed to play out there. It's like, you know, I have a lot of, speaking of synchronicity, I have a lot of synchronicity around my birthday. It's like a 15 minute crazy wild story. And mm. one of those partners, I mean, his, his baby mama has my birthday. His grandmother has my birthday. And, you wow. know, and that's, it's like a huge story where I can, you know, it, it would take me a while to explain it all. But so I can see, you know, one of my favorite interviews was um, a guy named Evan Alexander. Are you familiar with Evan Alexander? He, he wrote Proof of Heaven. He was a Harvard neurosurgeon who wasn't really into this uh, what did you call it? I've Go- heard of gooey stuff. Of heaven, yeah. Uh, yeah. He yeah. wasn't that into the woo woo and, you know, Harvard neurosurgeon. Right. And then yeah. what do you know? The Harvard neurosurgeon gets meningitis and here's the brain specialist with a brain that goes from one day being fine to being fried. I've the definitely next. heard of this. Yeah. He's in a coma. Yeah. He's, you know, he's in a coma for a week. The doctors say, sorry, fam, his brain is fried. Pull the, you got to pull the plug. He's not coming back. He miraculously came back when he came back. All he remembered at first was his time on the other side. And when he shared, that you know that perspective that he learned one of the things he said is like a lot of times the villains in your story are your best friends on the other side Mm. they're playing those roles so that your soul can have the experience it needs to and wants to experience and i find that really fascinating and you look at like energetic ties to someone who you know maybe is playing uh playing a villain in your story it gives you a whole different perspective on you know 
how it's all structured in a way that to me allows me to um, create space for forgiveness yeah. when I understand that it's all by divine design in some way. I was literally, as you were describing, like the enemies on the other side become your friend, your greatest teacher. I was literally seeing the yin yang symbol mm. because there is no way that we can have black without white, dark yep. without light. It doesn't fucking exist. Yep. But yet, even before we recorded, you're like, Osho on his deathbed said that we really never actually transcend the ego. Right. You know? Yep. God, and I'm just wondering, it's such a mystery here. So much. There's so much mystery in life. And there's a huge part of me that in the past I would get so triggered and angry why people would suffer. Yeah. You know, like my mom was manic bipolar when I was young. My dad left when I was two months old. I came in, I was in an incubator, yada, wow. yada, yada. We all have our own kind of initiation, right? Yeah, right. And I'm not saying that to, to belittle my story or, or even to focus on it. It's more just like it happened. Those were events that happened. Yep. So I'm just curious for you, like if you could look back and just really see how you got here, mm -hmm. was there a couple, was there two or three points on the timeline where you're like, yep, mm. that was definitely a transition moment for me. It sounds like the, the travel was one of them yep. where shit burned to the ground. Yep. Creating this podcast was another yeah. creating positive head. Um, certainly was, was another big transition because it, it's something where I was so passionate teaching and talking about the ultimate nature of reality, it, teaching best what I most need to learn as I explore this, you know, um, the, the, a lot of these perspectives and so forth, uh, I would talk to anyone who would listen. And so it was, you know, my friends and family's ears were bleeding for the longest time. So <laughs> I knew when I had the idea to create a podcast, I'm like, okay, this is for me. This is, yeah. and whether or not one person benefits or, you know, millions, um, it's a success because I'm mm. living my dharma. I'm, I'm getting this, you know, this information, these, these thoughts off of my, my chest. And I think all of us to varying degrees just want to be heard and felt and to affect, you know, the world around us. And, and once I had a taste for doing that and positively impacting, I know you can relate to this, yeah. you know, there's nothing more rewarding than getting that message or email. Like I was, you know, clinically depressed and nothing could help me. And I started tuning into your show and yeah. now it's changed my life and turned, you know, it's like, uh, more of that, please. It's, it's the most, you know, incredible feeling I've, I've ever had with uh, I had a woman email me a few months back and she was like, because of your show, I've now become a personal trainer. I've looked at my um, addictions differently. And I actually have become, she said, she said something like I've become friends with my anxiety. And wow. I was like, Oh yeah. Like the happy cry feeling. You yeah. Know? Right. Cause shit, man, if I can just do that as much as possible, yep. then that can fuel me on days where I don't want to write emails yep. or I don't want to manage things or, you know, the work becomes tedious Yep. and I don't care who you are. Like, you know, building a dream or building anything of value that comes from the heart, it's not always going to feel yep. like a lot of the spiritual bypassing people, mm -hmm. not just here in LA, but across the world preach about. Yep. Damn. There's no such thing as good vibes only. Yep. It doesn't right. fucking exist. Right. <laughs> you can't have one without the other. It's like, it's a necessary, necessary understanding. It's going to be peaks and valleys. And yeah. when you know that and you're, you're in a valley, then you can navigate it in a way that's the most, um, effective, I think, as opposed to getting lost in the darkness or wow, you know, I'm, I'm feeling down today. I'm not feeling like I'm not feeling great. Okay, I'm going to love myself here. It's like Matt Kahn, <clears throat> who I had on Optimistic the other a couple weeks ago. He wrote the book, Whatever uh, Whatever Arises, Love That. <sighs> and I just love that as just a general premise as the way to navigate. It's like, okay, this is here. A master is someone who embraces whatever shows up because I know it's exactly what they need to get them to the next greatest and greatest version of themselves. So when you really understand that, then it's like, okay, um, the game, you know, the way I look at it, the, 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 the aim is not to always be happy necessarily as, as much as it is to be at peace with mm -hmm. what is. Mm -hmm. So you're, you know, becoming that, that, you know, calm in the center of the storm. Okay. I'm observing. Okay. Oh, I'm off today. Oh, things are challenging today. Oh, my energy is lower today, whatever. And I'm not going to get sucked into the story around it. I'm rather going to observe it and give it its space and allow it to you know, it's a cloud, allow the cloud to pass by, allow it and do whatever I can to gently find my way out of it, but never with a forcing and, you know, uh, burying it down or trying to mask it. Being authentic is everything. What do you think the role of money is here in this 3D reality? Mm. Like, how do you see money as energy? Great question. Currency, I'm, asking, I'm love, asking it for me too. Yeah, yeah. I, currency, I with you. currency, man. Yeah. I mean, it's meant to flow. So 
you know, there's so many hangups around money and so, so much, much wounding, so much, so much pain. pain. Yeah. And, you know, the truth is, is you can't be poor enough to help enough poor people. You can't be sick enough to help sick people. And so understanding, you know, what really helped me with it, and I certainly have my own journey with money that is still, you know, unfolding. And I, I'm certainly calling in more financial abundance to do more, to do more good in the world with is my, the, the, the story that I tell and the, the, really the truth for me, it's like, I would like to have billions of dollars ultimately flow through me. And, you know, for my last meal, I need to borrow five bucks to get, you know, my last meal because I, I, you know, dispersed it all into the world in some way, shape or form to keep it flowing, keep it in a way that's affecting things positively. I think that's the only thing that will, will the only gauge when we get to the other side is, okay, how much, how much good did you do? That's really not like, oh, how many zeros did you leave in your yeah, bank account? Yeah. And so in a lot of people, I think it turns into this. I've been around a lot of super wealthy people. And I noticed this trend of like it becomes this. How do I stack away more? And and, and, and they even go a lot of times from um, after they've accumulated wealth. Then it becomes about preservation rather than growing it. Like I don't want to lose what I have. Why would I risk anything to get more or to do anything in the world when I have it so good and it's so easy? for me now and I don't you know if I if I'm if I preserve it then I can continue with this lifestyle where I, I've sort of made it home free where the financial concerns are and I don't want to risk ever going backwards and for me you know that that just doesn't that doesn't work for me I, I think you know getting into alignment with the idea what really empowers me is remembering that I'm one with the source that creates and animates all things I'm so abundant I built this place and so did you listening, right? That's like, you talk about, oh, do I deserve more? You know, I, I love the, the saying, I don't remember where I originally heard it, but when you come holding your bag of sugar to be filled, it will be examined to see how large it is. How much do you think you're worth? How big is the bag that you're holding out? For the universe to give you 10 billion, it's like giving you $10. If you're energetically, it feels the same to you. Yes. Right? It's infinite, the amount that's there. You're the one that like built and created the tools and the resources, not only for this planet, this whole you know, 3D universe and beyond. You're one with that, that infinite power and source of abundance. And we're here like, you know, sitting on the back of a whale fishing for a minnow. Like we're so, <laughs> that's a cool there's, visual. there's so much that's at our disposal. And we just are, we're at a point in our evolution where we're learning how to open the, the, the nozzle more, you know, open the faucet so that we can allow more in. And it starts with understanding the situation in which you find yourself. And that is that you are as worthy for infinite abundance as any ever other soul ever has been or will be. When I listen to you, my body feels relaxed, which tells me that it's true. Because mm. I used to always use my mind to be like, is that true or not? Mm -hmm. Like try to poke holes in people's yeah. shit. Instead of just being in my body, just being at home in my I body. Love like, that. Everyone listening can feel what you're saying mm. if their body is attuned to it, if they've done the work to be somatically open, yeah. right? How did you get and, there where you figured that out as, oh, as a way? Like, that's the journey, man. Because I was, I was thinking when you were talking about vibration, I was like, okay, one of the first interviews I saw was Michael Beckwith on Oprah. And he was describing, you can be a vibrational match temporarily. Mm -hmm. You can kind of fake it till you make it. And yep. you can make a bunch of money, but you're going to lose it. Yep. Because if you're not a vibrational match in your core, yep. in who you really are, yeah. like if you're, whether you want to describe it as chakras being aligned or your soul is connected to your, your head or however you want to describe it. Like we all have had temporary success. And I think I did. I think I had like temporary success. Even when I started the podcast, you know, to be on like new and noteworthy, but I was honestly, I was struggling. I was fucking struggling. And it's exactly what you believe. And I've heard you talk about it. We teach most what we get to learn. Yep. And that has always been always, even when I wasn't aware of it, always been my, my MO, like yeah. really just understanding like, wow, if I can just share everything that's going on for me, even if it's really uncomfortable and I feel kind of nervous to share it, yep. I know that it's going to unlock something in someone hearing it. 
And so the process began for me being a really overweight kid, Mm. you know, being 280 pounds at 21 years old. Wow, you're so fit now. But I could see the inner fat kid there. You can see it, right? Yeah. I mean, we all have it. We all have it. (laughs) Give me. me Mine might be more outer right now. Give me the ding dongs, (laughs) y'all. Yeah. (laughs) Half the ding dong. (laughs) So, but that's that's where it started for me. Like my my soul contract or my whatever energetic transmission for me to get down here was that I was going to choose a mom who had emotional and mental health issues. I was going to choose a dad that had um, cognitive dissonance. And by the way, I love you, mom and dad, with all my heart because I see you. Mm. I see how awesome you are and I see what you've been through. And my soul came down for this kind of challenging upbringing. So I found this drug when I was young and it was not cocaine or ecstasy like it was food because food allowed me to like get that deep Mm. rest, that feeling of rest that Mm. I wanted. Mm. And so when I was stressed, when I was unhappy, when I was sad, when my mom would be in her room crying, when my dad wasn't around, when I would get bullied at school, however you want to describe it, I would just go to food. Mm. And so like to no surprise, you know, flash forward, I'm 21 years old. I'm 280 pounds. I'm in a job wow, I hate. 280 pounds. 280 pounds, well, pounds man. Well. And it, I did a lot of athletics in high school, so a lot of it was muscle. But yep. still, like, I'm 215 now. I feel good. Yeah. You know. Anyways, I, I got to this point where I was so sad and so frustrated, and just like I, I can't even go there right now. Just time traveling. Like I was at a party drinking. I didn't really want to be in this relationship. I didn't want to be a Mercedes Benz mechanic. That was my first career out of high school. Oh, wow. And I wasn't happy in my body. So it was like health, wealth, relationships. The triangle was fucking melting. Mm. Like I was, everything was burning to the ground. And uh, I'll never forget this, man. I like slammed down a party cup. I was playing beer pong. Mm-hmm. And I felt this feeling from a source. I didn't know it was source at the time. But I was like there's more to life than this. Like it was like a message, like almost as if it was an an ayahuasca screaming at me, like there's more to life than this. Wow. So I slammed the cup down. I ran home drunk for like three miles. Wow. And I typed in the computer, like, how do I be healthy? I spent the next year and a half figuring out like losing weight, gaining weight, trying to understand what health really was and like what, what eating and movement really was. Then I became so frustrated that I sold everything I owned and I moved to Hawaii wow. when I was 24 years old. And in Hawaii, I spent six months by myself, wow. you know, just being with Josh. Wow. Like understand, like, who's Josh? Right. We never, we never get taught this in school. No. Nobody ever teaches us, like, you need to be still and meditate because here's what's going to come from it. Or, hey, here's what self-inquiry looks like. Yeah. You know, this is not taught. So I, I really felt like Source kind of woke me up at that table of drinking and, and just brought me to this place where I could go to Hawaii for six months and explore who I really was. Wow. And what I found was I was sad. I was angry. I was resentful. I was a petulant child, you yeah. know, so I, I needed an outlet to get that, that anger out. And I found fitness. I was working out at a gym and the fitness manager was like, I've seen you get good results. You should think about being a personal trainer. Mm. And I was like, what's a trainer? I didn't yeah. even know what training was. Wow. And that led me to a 10 year career that, that we already talked about where I transitioned from. But, um, my physical intelligence, my ability to be physically intelligent really only came from having the background of 10 years and like 10,000 hours with clients to see what they were going through, which really all they needed was to breathe and to have a friend. Right. That's the majority of what these people needed in in a session, not how to do a perfect lunge. Right. And now I can look back on it and be like, oh, that's, I needed all that bedrock of training and and seeing what people really needed so that I could see what I needed in myself. Right. Um, Because we always attract the clients and the people that, that, really re- resonate with where we are too. Yep, I don't care how, how much mastery you have. Yep. And so, um, I got to this place where, you know, I was called to the medicine in 2015 with ayahuasca mm. and that really drove me deeper into like feeling my body, yeah. feeling my stomach. Actually, really, I was always afraid to let my stomach hang out yeah. because I was picked on a lot when I was young and like, like that, you know, your stomach, blah, blah. So being in my stomach, being in my heart, being in my throat, stomach, mm-hmm. stomach, solar plexus, heart and throat for me are like if I make my decisions from there, I'm always on the right path. Wow. But if I'm, if I'm holding my breath and if I'm not using breath work and if I'm not in my body, even just hearing you talk, I'll remind myself to breathe while you're talking, you know, just breathe in through my nose. Yeah. Because if we can do that as, as a human being, then we can connect to what's actually there. But most of us are just so holding our breath. We're so like clavicle up Breathing that, shallow. Yeah, like like messages, whatever you want to call it, divine inspiration, downloads. Nothing can get through because our conduit is blocked. Our conduit is blocked. 
So yeah, I might get something on an analytical or logical level, but it's not going to sink in me like it is if I'm breathing and I'm listening to somebody that I respect, right. you know, or I'm open to whatever messages they're giving me. That's a totally different intelligence. Right. And I think that for body intelligence, people get it all wrong. Most people try to study like, how do I get ripped? How do I get muscles? How do I get six pack? How do I run a marathon? Blah, 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 blah. And that's cool because I think there is some part of, of the human body that is kind of fun to push sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, but, but when it comes to like what I believe physical intelligence is, it's our ability to embody. Like, isn't that funny? Like it's the word body is not body, <laughs> right? It's our ability to embody how something really feels so that we know that it's true. Yeah. And so our mind creates a feedback loop. Our physical and emotional intelligence are tied together. So that's where it started for me, man, was having those 10 years going through really just having a lot of, um, thoughts that weren't true. A lot of old thoughts about my body wasn't good enough and I was too fat and who would want to be with me. And that led to a lot of honestly addictions, mm -hmm. you know, and things that did not serve my soul, which now I look back on that old version of Josh and I'm like, man, I love you. Like you, yeah, did, right. you did such a good job. Like you were coming from a place of love. Um, it's just, you didn't have the awareness. Right. So that's our job, man, is to just be more aware of what intelligence really is. Yeah. And understanding the, the rite of passage through it all, you know, there's probably someone out there listening who maybe is in the worst health of their life right now or they have a disease or something yeah you know? and knowing that like okay that's not the it's just a stopping off point you know i think yep. of the i don't know if you've met ian who's the chef here um, yes i did okay so ian you know originally um you know he was 70 pounds heavier a couple maybe two years ago or so through the podcast we started we did a group cleanse and he participated in that and he ended up like just turning his self around. now he's one of the healthiest people i know he's super healthy super healthy he goes he's making like the best food i've ever best had food. So good. he's like works out constantly but yeah. he wasn't that two years ago you know he shared a picture the other day and i was like wow it's such a different character and it's like okay you you, you know that was a part of your journey and that's the exciting thing it's like every moment is another chance to turn it all around if you're hearing this and it's like it's if Ian can do it, you can do it. If Josh can do it, you can do it. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's always, um, that's the most exciting thing about everything, all of our growth and learning as beings and, and the, something that, you know, even someone, I think sometimes people get like, oh, I'm 70 years old. It's too late for me or mm. whatever. It's like, mm. no, you're actually an eternal being and whatever learning and growth happens here is carrying forward. It is. If you say it is. Yep. Right. <laughs> right. If you say, and it's easy for me, I'm 39. So somebody 70 is like, look at this 39 year old telling me what I should and should not do. I'm not <clears> telling you you should do anything. I'm just telling you the truth that you know, deep down is actually true. Right. I'm, that's all I'm doing. It's a rem I, reminding you of what you already know. I want to go back because I felt something in my body when you're describing like people that want to lose weight, mm -hmm. man, if I could just share this one thing right now, let me just relax my shoulders when I say this, like if you think that when you lose weight or when your body looks a certain way that you're then finally going to feel good or, or you're going to be like, Oh, I'm loved. I'm supported. Like that is the ultimate lie of your ego. Mm. Because what I can share from you from my own 39 year experience is that that is a lie that perpetuates the broken fundamentals of the fitness and the weight loss industry. Mm. That is the entire lie that everyone swallows because we're fed these advertisements, these weapons of distraction mm. where it's like, oh, if I look like that, then I'll feel good. Then people will love me. Instagram perpetuates this <laughs> bullshit. Totally. So, so what I want to share with, with you is the truth. And the truth is that you be happy. You be, you embody happiness. You embody love. You love yourself. You enjoy exercise. You love the way eating greens and food feels. You love that. And that feeling, that energy is actually what allows you to let go of the weight. You don't yeah. lose weight to get happy. Yeah. You embody and do the inner work to be happy. And I fucking promise you with all of my heart and soul, I promise you the weight will come off. Yeah. And I did it wrong for four or five years where I was just like <clears throat> tracking my calories and macros and just like really, really hurting myself, like, like really harming myself, you know? Um, so that's it, my friends, like do the work of inner happiness mm -hmm. I, and, and, and the weight will slide off of you. Yeah. Most, that, is, that is it. Most people, you know, do something like work in order to have something like money in order to be something like happy when really that do have be it, paradigm is the way it works is is the opposite you be it to yeah, see it you yeah. be something like happy okay in this case in this example i'm happy that i'm actually i got on the treadmill for the first time ever today i may be 
completely overweight and I did the small thing, mm. you know, and I'm going to love myself there, right? So yeah. I'm being happy in that moment and that's going to per- per- perpetuate you wanting to do more of it. And then you find yourself uh, having and, and doing more things that um, are in alignment. They'll start appearing, even reflections of that that state that you created on your own, all of a sudden, oh, reflections of it, which make it even easier. And it turns into this positive feedback loop. Next thing you know, yeah. you, you've created from the inside out. Well, and let's be even more honest. What you're talking about is like this almost maintenance of your vibe. Mm-hmm. There's a maintenance aspect. Mm-hmm. So there's days where we're going to be really challenged yep. to hold high vibe. Yep. And it's sometimes it's okay if the high vibe goes away. Yep. But there is like a dedicated path to being in a higher vibration, Yep. whether you're analytical or spiritual. And, um, those are all the tools that I love learning about, you know, like that's what I feel from you here. You're, you're spotlighting all these guests and your community with the food and the backyard and nature and living close to the ocean. Like there's a lot of elements Mm -hmm. that are baked into your world Mm -hmm. that are around the maintenance factor of that, that higher vibration. Yep. Did you design that on purpose or did that come through <clears throat> randomly? No, Something I, tells me it wasn't random. <laughs> it wasn't random. It, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I launched Positive Head with that, like, you know, first and foremost for myself. Right. It's like, okay, I need something daily to continue to manage my vibration. Yeah. I started off once a week and I'm like, oh, I need more than this. Okay. And then I went to five days a week and that became, that became a, um, you know, a way for me to, We thought there was an earthquake, you guys. The, yeah. build, the building started shaking. <laughs> I think okay. it's a dryer. Okay. <laughs> that that came up, became a way for me to, um, you know, start down the path of, you know, the most growth I've had has been in these years since launching the podcast because, you know, even, and there were days I'll get up and I'm like, oh, I'm not necessarily feeling. I'm not in the mood. I'm not in the mood to be Mr. Positive Head, right? And when I would turn my attention there and start to focus on that direction and even share vulnerably or authentically, like, okay, I've had an off day and you're just processing it out loud and moving through it next thing you know by the time the recording's over I'm like oh I feel like I feel great I actually processed it in a really healthy way mm. and or I feel better maybe I'm not you know this isn't going to be my pinnacle day but working through it in a way without over dramatizing it and just letting it be what it is and you know I think vulnerability and authenticity are, are the the greatest superpower that we have yeah you know and uh, as I learn to do that more and more publicly out of necessity because you know um that's something that I'm like, how was I ever inauthentic before? It makes no sense. My entire life and business and podcast shifted so radically when I had a weekend intensive with a business coach in Vegas. And I was really, like I said earlier, I was white knuckling. I'm like, how am I going to grow this thing? Like, how am I going to reach people? How am I actually going to quote, do this thing? Mm -hmm. And he said to me, what are you the most afraid of sharing? Mm. Like what freaks you out when you think about sharing it? And I was like, well, I'm leading this wellness podcast, but like, I'm not, I don't really feel well. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm not really super stoked on the extra energy I'm carrying and I'm not really in a relationship. And Mm -hmm. there was a lot of components of wellness that like, I really was afraid of looking at, you know, like my shadow side of this. And he's like, start sharing that. Yeah. Start sharing what you're most afraid of and do it. And that will, and that will be the genesis of how you master those things. And at the time I was like, I don't want to fucking do that. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to share my vulnerable stuff, you know? And, um, but God, it's been this, this podcast, like you said, with positive head, like wellness force has been my journey into tapping into that force within myself. Yeah. We're all, we're all sentient beings wherever we came from, from source energy down here to do something yep. and to do it well. Right. So the challenge is like, okay, how do we actually surrender to that process and attune to it by just being real? Yep. By just saying, here's where I'm really at. Here's what I'm really going through. This is hard. Do you guys ever go through that too? Oh yeah. There's like 45 million people right now that actually, if heard this would say yes. Yep. So we're never alone. And it's this illusion of fucking separation that, that Brandon's issues and and Josh's issues and everyone listening's issues are somehow only ours, right? (laughs) You know, they're only our issues and no one else feels lonely. No one else deals with their weight. No one else feels stressed. No one else has a broken heart. It's all a lie. It's all a lie. And sometimes I wonder why does that lie even exist? Mm -hmm. You know, where do these lies come from? Do they come from past generation? Do they come from the collective unconsciousness itself? Do they come from the field? 
and we just absorb it based on a lesson that we have to learn. I mean, we can go a lot of different ways with yeah. that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's that's a great question. And you know, one thing that I always say to to people is, if it scares you and excites you, it's probably for you. Sounds like intimate relationship. Yeah, it really. I mean, you know, <laughs> each of us. Your growth edge is going to be a little bit scary and it's going to be a little bit exciting. And, you know, I think what's great, though, Josh, I think more and more people now have taken the standpoint of being more vulnerable in their lives. Yeah. Like, they've, t- you know, you have people out there who've, who've been really guarded their whole lives. And then they've heard from me or you or someone else like vulnerability, vulnerability. Oh, wow. I found this new superpower, vulnerability. And they're like, OK, let me think about this. I'm going to test the waters a little bit. And then they go and be vulnerable with someone in their life. And it just opens things up in a way that they're like, whoa, that got like incredible results. And that's really what I always say about all this stuff is, you know, just be open minded enough to explore it, to explore it and test it and see for yourself because the results speak louder than any, you know, we can talk all day. What are the results if you apply some of these perspectives and you're yeah. willing to sort of step out on that, you know, on the, out of your comfort zone. And this is what blocks people though, is because as they do what you're saying, there's the pride element that comes in and the pride says, don't try, don't be vulnerable, don't apply, don't learn, don't put yourself out there because if you do, you're going to look like a fucking idiot. Mm-hmm. So pride is like this <clears throat> ultimate black veil of growth. Yeah. It's pride that's really like almost the Grim Reaper. Yeah. Like right. if pride was a Halloween character, pride <laughs> would dress up for Halloween as the Grim Reaper because <laughs> pride just crushes and slices the neck of people's dreams. Yeah. <laughs> it, just, it just kills people, man. And and I even feel it still. I still feel it. And I'm like, right, see, yeah. how, do I, how do I love the pride aspect? Mm-hmm. You know, how do we love our fears? How do we love the things that cause us pain? How do we love all the things, you know, which the gentleman you were mentioning um, that you interviewed a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. you, you think you said something about how, to, how do I love that, that? Whatever arises, love that. Whatever arises, love that. I mean, talk about the ultimate learning curve for life. Yep. Um, that's been a big one for me, man, especially loving the things that I've done in my past, mm-hmm. you know, like really forgiving myself for, um, Addictions, the way I treated women, the way I treated myself, and um, just feeling into that a lot this year. You know, mm-hmm. we're, we're stepping into a new decade, man, 2020. Wow. And this is a big, this is a call to arms for all of us. Yeah. You know, like, what are we really doing? Who said it to me the other day, 2020? It's, I hadn't really put this together. They're like, oh, that's going to, it's the year of clear vision, you know, 2020. Oh. We're 2020 vision. Right? Oh, yeah, that's so true. It's like, if there's symbology in there, and there always is, that's a really good. That we're all stepping into a year where, written on the, on the poster card on the front of the book of the year is Clear Vision 2020. So you know, and that's really what it all comes down to is like once you start integrating these clearer perspectives on how to navigate your reality. Once again, the results are going to speak for themselves, and and. Um, you know, I just applaud everyone who's listening for doing it. I mean, think of all the things they could be tuning into. How many things are vying for their attention and they're listening to you and me talk about this stuff right now? Yeah. They, these are people who are like, I want the clear vision. I'm ready. I'm, I'm willing. I'm curious. I'm willing to self-examine. I'm willing to put myself, you know, in uncomfortable situations in order to instigate, you know, growth. And, um, yeah, it's inspiring. I'm inspired by all the – how many people actually are – you know, turned on by this and wanting to go down this path. It just fuels my fire to continue. What's one of the most uncomfortable edges you're leaning into so that when you're in the clear vision, you can maintain it. In other words, what's something that still gives you the gift of a trigger Mm -hmm. that you're leaning into with love? Mm -hmm. Is there something like that in your life right now? Something that I'm still leaning into that triggers me. Hmm. I got a few of them. Yeah, please. Yeah. And then I'll think about what mine is. (laughs) Okay. So my, um, one of my biggest triggers is feeling misunderstood. Mm. So I'm in an intimate partnership, which it's the deepest love I've ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. And it's brought up my biggest triggers Mm -hmm. because in intimate partnership, the child self, the shadow self and the higher self, they're all kind of hanging out and dancing with each Mm -hmm. other. And that's what masculine and feminine polarities or however your relationship structure, it's all good. If you're straight, if you're gay, if you're hetero. Uh, wait, straight and hetero are the same thing. So, so yeah, I just realized it. So however you structure a relationship, um, my, my biggest edge right now is to stay on purpose, um, on mission, be in self-care of my body, mm-hmm. maintain my friendships. 
and be open and powerful to the lessons that are coming through in intimate partnership. It's this like, you know, massive balancing act, health, wealth, relationships triangle. Mm -hmm. That's my biggest edge right now is noticing, being aware of the trigger, Mm -hmm. being aware of being misunderstood Mm -hmm. and knowing that it's not personal, like really deeply down knowing that it's not personal, like embodying that really like mental warrior child heart archetype where Mm. it's like, I'm going to keep an open heart to you no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use my mind to notice when I'm doing a pattern that's not serving me, right? You know, I'm going to stay open in my heart and use my mind, how it was designed, but my heart's the leader. Yep. My heart's fucking leading this. My yeah. mind is the servant yeah. and that's my biggest edge right now. And you know, I love Carrie Michelle. I love our union. And at the same time, it's brought up so much in me that I didn't even know was there. Right. And, uh, and that's real. Whew, that's powerful. And you know, I, once you understand that your relationships are first and foremost, f- first and foremost about your growth and, secondarily about your, you know, happiness skipping through, yeah. you know, happily ever after kind of vibes. Yeah. It's like you come together for the opportunity to grow and growing is not always the simplest thing. And your triggers are your treasures, right? And so this person, you know, it's like Ram Dass said, if, if you think you're, you know, enlightened, spend a week with your family. And it's that same, <laughs> it's that same thing, you know, your partner. Somebody's who, listening to this during the holidays. Yeah, they're like, yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> they just got triggered. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, partnerships, there's no greater romantic partnerships. There's probably no greater opportunity for growth. Great, greatest opportunity for some of the greatest opportunity for joy as, uh, oh. you know, human and the greatest opportunity for growth and to be, you know, just rubbed the wrong way some of the times. And, um, so, yeah. you know, just being aware that that's a part of the, the journey and also this idea that, you know, it's there for growth. All relationship is for growth. Yeah. And if what I think one of the big misconceptions we talked earlier about where did these messages or ideas come from? Yep. The idea that a relationship has to last forever in order to be successful. That's a big one that is permeates our collective you know, consciousness. And, oh, my gosh, we, we made it five years and all of a sudden this natural separation occurred for whatever reason. I feel like pulling away and it's like and, and we finally we tried to make it work. We tried to force it and then it only got more painful. And then we finally it collapsed after all this forcing and forcing. And now we're a failure and it was all for naught and it was a waste of time because we didn't, you know, skip into the sunset together. It's like you're going to come together and with different energies throughout eternity. Yeah. And it's always, and thank goodness there's some shelf life to it, whether, you know, you spend a whole lifetime together or five weeks or five days or whatever, sure. that separation gives us the opportunity to to miss it and to have, you know, you never truly lose anyone or anything. And that brings me a lot of, a lot of joy. It's like, okay, I'm going to, if I'm in a relationship with anyone, friend or romantic or whatever it might be, if there's a separation that occurs, honoring that separation, knowing that I'm infinitely abundant, the universe will send whatever else that I need, you know, and, and a lot of times we get so hung up on like this thing, we got to last the next hundred years or this is a complete failure. Sure. And I think that's such a massive misconception. I love what you're saying and plus sign on top of it. Mm-hmm. I also believe that if we are not aware, truly aware of our attachment styles, our deepest triggers, the gut feeling that everybody talks about mm-hmm. that navigates them through relationships can be soured. Yeah. Think about how many things in this world can literally change people's gut feeling if they're not aware. It could be gut brain dysbiosis. It could be an abusive uh, parent situation that somebody just pushed under the rug and never dealt with. There's a lot of way, like I agree with what you're saying. And I think there's another reality too, where if someone really loves someone and they know it and they, and they have a desire for that to work without forcing it, yep. they can Make it last as long as it's supposed it could be to be the last whole life. Yeah, it could, which could be your doing, entire lifetime. By doing their inner work. Yeah. So I think there is a caveat. Obviously, if you're in an abusive relationship, leave. Right, right, <laughs> you right. know, there's certain things that don't serve us, and we know it. Rather, whether our access is messed up or not. But, but um, you know, there was a lot of there's a lot of women in my life that um, I think I could have lasted longer and gotten more lessons from, mm-hmm. whether it was supposed to be a lifetime or not. Yep. If I would have been more aware of Agreed. my triggers and of my attachment styles. And I don't say that to shame the old Josh because, again, like, I'm hugging him. He's good. Yeah. The old Brandon was cool, too. I can yeah. see him back there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> He's a good dude. But it's just the level of awareness that we're operating at, which is why I'm so fucking grateful yeah. for you and I to just be here. 
Yeah. You know, just be here in this moment and, and talk about what we believe to be the truth. Because in three years, we're going to believe things to be the truth that we weren't even aware of now. Yep. And it's going to keep unfolding, man. It's an ever unfolding, you know, onion of sorts. And yeah, I, I think you're 100% right. I, what I'm saying is it, by no means, I think it's a beautiful story for someone to meet it. 16 years old and then spend the rest of their life together like till they're 116 cool like that's the sole contract and path the optimal path for growth for some people i wonder if that's happened like high school sweethearts and then they're 100 and still married i know of course it has i mean it's uh, it's it's possible yeah is there a hundred is there a hundred year anniversary out there can you send us a link yeah send us a a link of this (laughs) story Hundred year anniversary it's our hundred year wedding anniversary i mean that that one is probably pretty tough because they would both have to make it to like yeah 116 Maybe seven, there's definitely 75 years. Definitely yeah. 75. Yeah. It's a little trickier. Dude. But it, it's inevitable to happen. I mean, they say what? Like the first person to live to 150 healthily now is probably 50 or 60. And then you have some people talking about us living to be in the thousands, you know. Um, Do you play around with biohacking or longevity at all? Um, I mean, I, I am... I, I certainly haven't went as deep down the rabbit hole as a lot of people. Yeah, me neither. But, um, I explore. It's just something where I feel like my passions are more about how do we live the richest life and the, the, the life well lived now. Yep. I'm not, I'm not for some reason called to extending it as long as it yep, possibly right. can be. Right. Um, but I understand, I get why people want that though. Yeah. Especially if you think yeah. that this is the only vehicle you get to check out of the, you know, the, the lot. It's like maybe at 120, I'm like ready to turn in this, this avatar and get, you know, get something a little updated. <laughs> yeah. I, I, man, I saw my, I saw my grandma on my dad's side and my grandpa just have these really sad and just lengthy, mm. uh, departures. Mm-hmm. And then I saw my grandpa, he went in and he was pretty much out, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm like, I want to kind of go like that. Mm-hmm. You know, and I saw my other grandma, she, she went through a little bit of suffering too. I think there is something so beautiful though. I was watching a video about, Alan Watts, it was like the meaning of life on this YouTube channel called After School with mm-hmm. a K. Mm-hmm. And um, it's this beautiful reminder. Like, I used to be kind of angry at death or like mm-hmm. really super sad with death. And it came up in a lot of ceremonies. And, and um, as of the past few months, I've just really been reminding myself like, death is this beautiful, beautiful it's contrast. Birth. It's a birth. De- I believe it- death is a birth. When you were born to this dimension, you sort of died from whence you came. You, you know what I mean? Your your consciousness that's here left there, and that was a death in, in a sort. And when you die here, you'll go back. That your consciousness will go back there, and it's a birth back to. So there's really, you know, there's no such thing. There's transit. It's like going through different doors. Mm-hmm. That's how I view it. Do you believe we were talking a couple of days ago about interstellar, the mm-hmm. multiple unlimited <laughs> realities, uh-huh. almost like when Neo in the second matrix uh, went to go see the architect and yep. he's like, you've been here before. I know and there that. was unlimited yep. TVs yep. Yep. around. Yep. I want to believe that's true. I do. Believe the more. True. Okay. Can you convince me? Okay. So <laughs> can you convince sure. me that's true? I'll, 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 I don't know if I can convince you, but I'll certainly or just at least. You. Yeah. Like, so the way I view it is your life plays out at the corner of free will and destiny. So it's, Speaking of interstellar, remember when they're on the uh, planet and there's a giant wave coming and they get stuck longer than they planned on being there and an extra five minutes on that planet led to an extra 20 years on Earth? That's based off real science. So we know time is illusory. If you you shoot me into outer space at light speed and bring me back a day later, I'm a day older and you've been dead 100 years. So your fifth birthday party, I believe, is happening on another channel right now. You're just not tuned into that reality. As well as from this moment forward, there is versions of you, many versions from this moment forward. So I say it's destined because it's all already happened in the eternal now, right? It's all playing out now. And you just happen to be tuned in to the moment where the two of us are sitting here in front of this microphone, having this conversation, which is always happening. You're just watching that movie again, in a sense, um, because you like it. And so, so it's destined because it's already happened. It's free will because from this moment forward, source, God, higher self, whatever you want to call it, it is infinite in what it can experience. So you get, you know, to give you an example, my first, um, first psychic reading that I ever had, I was in, sitting in front of a, uh, woman in Atlanta, Georgia. And she said, you know, I see you in a cold place like Chicago working in business. Well, my jaw hit the floor because I was planning to move to Chicago and work in business at that time. Hmm. And then she goes, there's this whole other path though, in California and music, you know, music and, 
A year later, with the help of some psilocybin, I decided to form a band. Then I met someone from California. He brought me out for a visit. I was like, oh my God, I gotta live here. And here we are. So what was she seeing in that moment forward? She was seeing the potential Brandons based off of where I was vibrating. Well, you know I, I get to meet this woman. Yeah, yeah. Can you so, connect me with her, please? So, oh, man, that was okay. like 20 years ago. Um, but, you know, what? what's... So if any, But if anyone ever tells you, oh, I can definitely predict the future, like, run, because... I think they can see probabilities in some Ooh. cases, you know, um, but y- there's free will because you get to determine which version of you from this moment forward. So that's how I view it. You know, now the, what's the question from this moment forward? You want to experience the greatest and grandest version of Josh, right? No matter how, you know, statistically improbable, the greatness or whatever, if you can imagine it, God has been there, done that and gotten the t-shirt. It's source is infinite. So everything that I've ever created that seems, you know, maybe above average or extraordinary and anything that I will going forward comes from me saying, yeah, of course I'm going to do it. Um, Of course I'm going to make it. You know, it's just a vibrational choice. You be it to see it. And this is how we navigate the, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with the the Bashar who claims to, to be a channel. And, you know, I always say with channeling, whether it's happening or not, I, I'm indifferent. I'm more concerned with the information that comes through. And he talks yeah. about how every moment we're literally like, you know, flickering in and out of reality. I mean, the particles that make me up are like literally vibrations of energy f- flashing in and out of existence like a, you know, like a, a movie projector, right? Yeah. It's a light show. Everything's made of light. So literally it's all vibration. It's nothing is solid. And we're navigating potential realities with our vibration which lead us to what version of reality we step into next. So and I just actually talked about this on yesterday's. Uh, well, I'm glad. Days ago episode. I'm glad it's fresh. I mean, because I'm I'm the question that sparks for me is if there is unlimited, and if we're in one of those unlimited now, is it as simple as just deciding what we want? Is that truly it? And the reason it feels to the logical mind so challenging is because the logical mind says it can't be that simple. Mm. Yeah, and you know, it's we're still getting our sea legs as mini gods, is the way I put it. You know, we're we're creators, we're chips off the block, we're fractals mm-hmm. of the one, right? And we're still we're we're in a a simulation that is for babies, you know, to to get better at this creation thing. You know, thankfully there's some lag in the three third dimension, I would say, where if we don't think about the state, the three, you know, 30 story state pu- puff marshmallow man. And like, and then he appears. So I don't know if you remember Ghostbusters, oh, for sure. you know, yeah. like it's not happening instantaneous. Now, yeah. when you think about being disembodied and beyond the physical, you think about, you know, traveling with thought instantly manifesting something. Oh, I want to create something. You know, it's magic. Right. So, in, in 3D reality, I believe there's some lag here, which actually serves to protect us in some ways. But as we ascend or evolve, that gap is getting narrower and narrower. As mm. this dimension merges us with the next, we're seeing quicker manifestations, more magic, more, you know, trippy stuff is happening, certainly in my world. Um, so it's it, there's a merging and melding that is happening right now between this dimension and, and the next. So the, the manifestation stuff is getting more pronounced and and it's more important that you get your game on lock because you lest you create something that you really don't want to see if someone's beginning to get their game on lock mm-hmm. what does that look like you know they're just starting so, to get okay their game so, so i think uh, uh, you know one of the things i've heard before that that sounds true and feels true to me is as you re- remember re-dash member, come back together with everyone and everything and realize everywhere I go, I'm there waiting for myself. I'm the only one in the room. The, the, the separation between us is, you know, an illusion, a, a divine dichotomy, you know, um, a relative truth. You and I are separate. We can make that argument. You and I are one. We can make that argument. Both are true depending on the vantage point from which we're viewing. So from the ultimate perspective, it's all one and you're the only one in the room. So, you know, as you start to play with that idea, it's um, it, it becomes more and more, um, you know, you start understanding like, oh, hold on. Everything is feedback to me. It's just telling me what I need to know. You start you start acting as if everyone else is the master and you're the student. Mm. Right. So the guy who cut you off on the road, he doesn't know he's a master giving you exactly what you need to 
to sharpen your axe. You know, you wanted to be a smooth sailor. Well, smooth, uh, you know, um, or, or a skilled sailor. Smooth seas never made for a skilled sailor. You need those things to rub up against you. You know, like Rumi said, how will your mirror be polished if you're annoyed by every rub? So you're here. Everyone is teaching you what you need to become the next greatest and greatest version of yourself. You're yeah. in your training ground. And as we level up, it's like the video game where you like, okay, you start off with nothing, then you get the wooden axe, then you get the steel axe, then you get the armor, then you, you know, you're leveling up. And one of the things that I've heard that rings true is as you sort of ascend back to your godhood state, you know, climb back up the sliding scale, so to speak, um, one of the stop off points a lot of times will be fame and fortune and all those things until you realize, okay, I, this is all illusory. And of course I created that and now I've you know, I've gotten what I can from that and it's kind of like not necessary. And so, you know, I think a lot of times you'll see people like they're, they're waking up and like, oh, wow, I'm the only, you know, I'm literally one of the, the stop off points for people is this sort of Jesus complex. Like, oh, I'm the one, you know, and, and I've, I've seen this a lot of times with people who come online spiritually. They're tapping into the truth that they are the one, but they forget that so is everyone else, mm. <laughs> you know. And yeah. so it can it can be a trap where, you know, a lot of times people get really like, oh, I'm special. I'm better or superior. And it's another ego trick and kind of like spiritual narcissism, you know, um, is sort of I feel like a rite of passage um, for a lot of people. On this journey, man, especially here in LA, there's yeah. so many of these uh, spiritual narcissists and spiritual bypassers, and same thing with Encinitas. And honestly, I guess you could say same thing in any kind of cultural growth hub where yep. people focus on consciousness. Um, spiritual narcissism, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I definitely feel that. It's and a thing. It's a thing. It's, it's a, a it's, thing. it's a stop off point on the journey, though. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, really, what is narcissism? It's like someone that feels that there needs to be a veil of perfection in front of them so that they don't actually have to look at the imperfection mm. behind and love mm. the imperfection. Mm -hmm. Like narcissism is rampant right now. And I feel like with social, I feel like with social mm. media, it feeds the narcissistic engine of the collective. Yeah. Like I, I really, there's a, there's a part of me that's like, I understand why we have social media and I see the, the beauty in it. Cause honestly it brought you and I together in yep. some way. Yeah. But then there's also the awareness of this dark side of it. You know, it's like everything though, right? It's just like everything. two sided, two sided, you know, sword, you know, double edged mm -hmm. sword. It can, someone said to me the other day, you can, was it you? I can't remember. Something. You can use a scalpel to, you know, kill someone. You can use it to heal someone. Yeah. How's how it might everything have been, is neutral. By <laughs> it might have been me. I've said the thing about the hammer before too. Um, hammers can build a home. Yep. You can also kill someone yep. with a hammer, yep. Yep. you know? So is anything ever bad? I mean, you could say that a, a plane of kids that are traveling for band, uh, band presentation to Sweden that, that go down in a fiery blaze. One could say that that's the most terrible, painful thing ever. Yep. And I don't know if we can ever really explain that. Mm. Um, you know, a mother loses her life in childbirth. Mm -hmm. there's, there's incredibly deep, deep, wounding, painful things that happen in this world. And at the exact same moment, there's a baby being born. There's this conversation happening. There's a friend that we'll meet up with later. There's love making. There's mm -hmm. good food. There's, it's an amalgam of all these things. And I think to some people it can be so overwhelming because there's this quest for why. Mm -hmm. Why are all these things happening? Yeah. Did you ever get sucked down that hole oh, of why, I, why, why, I, why, why, I why, why? deep down that hole and have strong opinions of why. I'm happy to share my <laughs> opinion. Um, so the why is you can't know that which you are unless you know that which you are not. You're talking about an infinite creator being. I mean – Think about that for a moment. Feel into that for a minute. Imagine, you know, having a million lifetimes. Like, you're infinite. You, you're really indestructible. You can't be harmed. And then you say, okay, I'm going to experience. And part of that being the, it's all one and it's all love, right? It's, God is love and it is one, right? Well, that becomes meaningless. That means nothing if there's no, like we talked about earlier. You've never seen a great work of art without shadow in it. Mm. You can't know that which you are unless you know that which you are not. So you step out of that that safety net, almost boringly safety net, and say, okay, I want some, I want to feel, I want to feel alive, I want to feel adventure, I want to feel loss, I want, because I can't really lose anything, but I can pretend to lose something. Hmm. So, uh, how about I have a child that d dies in a car accident, and I really know what love means now, because I experienced not 
losing it for the first time in eternity. I can actually lose something, knowing behind it all that the, the cosmic gag is it was just pretend because you, you, you know, you get to the other side and you laugh at what your grief was. Like, oh, you, here you are again, and I can never lose you and you're always a part of me. But I did experience for a moment what it felt like to lose you, which made this experience now have more meaning. You know, you, mm-hmm. you, you so it's, it's all about contrast. So God is using all of these quote unquote painful things. It's all happening for love in the end. Mm-hmm. And that's what I believe wholeheartedly. That, and we've all experienced it all, either have or will experience it all. And that's the, 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 um, the game that uh, I believe our soul signed up for. You know, it's signed up for okay, I want, to, I want to go deep down the rabbit hole of contrast so that I can fully appreciate who and what I am. Yeah. That's what I believe is going on. So then there's a never-ending, bottomless ocean of love that Source pulls from to bring unlimited lifetimes and beings to the world and who knows to however many other worlds out yep. there. Yep. Personally, I like believing that. You know, and it's so interesting. I was talking to a friend uh, on a Zoom before I got over here, and I was like, you know, whatever I say is true and whatever you believe, that's our reality. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a big part of me that is just waking up so profoundly in 2019 Mm. to that being true that I never would have believed before. And everything comes in due time. You know, all this, all this understanding and awareness and all the things that we're talking about. Like, I know there's going to be people listening that they'll listen again Mm because we went over a lot of, we, we covered the bandwidth on on this podcast. We did. And I just want to say like, whatever's happening, um, you're loved. Yeah. So am I. And, and, you know, to add to that whole perspective on how reality is structured. Yeah. It's, it's, it's to me. Um, you, like you said, if you believe it, it is so. It's like abracadabra. It means I create as I speak, right? You're spelling. You're casting spells with your beliefs and your words. And your words are spells, right? Spelling. And so it's, uh, it's such a powerful thing to take on this perspective. And some of the most intelligent, well-adjusted, healthy, glowing humans I know have had these profound spiritual experiences where they've glimpsed beyond the veil or so it seems to them and feels to them at least, right? And they believe that they have and they say it's as real or realer than me and you sitting here, how visceral this experience is to us. And they all come, what's interesting, they're all coming back with the same story of, oh my gosh, this is how we do it throughout eternity. It's all happening for love in the end. And, and, you know, it doesn't mean it's not going to sting to lose the child or to see something that's painful and that we should be calloused about it. Right. But rather it puts it in a perspective that like, okay, it's, it's all going to be okay. And, you know, in the end, it's all going to be okay. And actually there is no end and there's never been a victim throughout eternity. It's all happened for you, not to you. And through you. And when you play with that idea, woo, that's the game changer. It's life is not happening to you. It is always, always, and always happening for you and through you. No matter how challenging. No matter how challenging. How much uh, pain or how much white knuckling is experienced. And also, too, I was feeling as you were explaining that, like, there is this beautiful element of shared suffering. Mm -hmm. Like, when we all go through loss together or we have Mm -hmm. something together, that's, why do you think... Why do you think that war is so glorified? It's because these men and now women are going to war to kill other people. I can't think of a more incredibly challenging proving ground for loss and for just adversity than war. I'm not glorifying war. I think war is one of the the lowest forms of human evolution ever. But, you know, it's here. And so we're all looking at it right now. And I also believe that whether it's war or athletics or the loss of someone in your community, whatever it is, like we all go through loss. We all will lose people that we love. And it's that feeling of sadness that allows us to really relax and connect with other people. Yep. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Inside Out. No. Uh, it's a Disney movie. It's, mm. If you have children, you get to watch this movie with them because um, I won't spoil it, but sadness is one of the components in the human mind. Mm. And sadness and grief is what bonds people together. Yeah. Because in shared suffering is really where we get stabbed and then love can pour out. Yeah. It's like the blade of adversity kind of slits us wide open and then love pours out. We yep. can and we can actually bathe in that together. Yeah. You know, and that's and that's a big part of of human existence, which is why what you're doing here and and just community in general 
is more powerful now than ever, which sounds kind of funny because it's always been powerful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Community's always been powerful, but especially now, man, because we're here in this one reality where shit's real crazy right now. Yeah. You know, shit's real crazy. The, the earth is hurting, mm -hmm. hurting each other. There's abject poverty everywhere and uh, people are living in squalor and, mm -hmm. and um, there's a lot of ways that we've treated each other. I can remember being a little boy and just being like, you know, you guys don't have to treat each other like this. When I was a super little kid, I had this awareness of like, we don't have to treat each other the way we're treating each other. It doesn't right. have to be like this, you guys. Right, right. And I feel like that's continued into my adult life. So, um, not really sure where I was going with that. However, it went where it needed to go. However, I think it really boils down to, um, can we just breathe and be in our bodies and just commit to learning about what intelligence is together? Yes. Can we just do it together, man? Cause here, none here. of us are on a mountaintop wearing white. The more, you know, the more you realize you don't know. It's like, Amen. always be willing to explore with an open mind and open heart. And it's like a lot of the concepts that I passionately share my perspective on as I, you know, this as a babe in the woods, you know, uh, stumble through this reality. I, I found them to um, ring true and yield a really powerful result. So mm. to me, that's sort of like, ah, OK, that I feeling I'm feeling really healthy, happy, well adjusted, optimistic and I'm getting great results. So that's a good indicator. And I'm always open for more information, you know, and to shift based off of new information sort of dropping in yeah. at any given time. Okay, so for, for Wellness Force audience, like share with us optimistic, positive head, what you're all about right now. Mm. And what you're all about for 2020. 2020. You know, how do we, how Clear do we, vision. How do we get up in there with yeah. you in yeah. 2020? Well, uh, there's a few ways. Um, so positive head, uh, of course, in, anywhere you search, you know, uh, anywhere there's um, podcasts, of course, you can find the show. And we, we do the podcast five days a week, actually. One is an interview style on Wednesdays. Um, for the longest time, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday was just me freestyling whatever was coming up, you know, bubbling up in my own life. Yeah. And then uh, recently, my dear friend, Dr. Erica Middlemiss, uh, started taking over Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, at, once I started down the path of launching a new late night style consciousness elevating, you know, video product talk show, TV style talk show wow. called Optimistic, uh, spelled M-Y-S-T-I-C. And um, so Optimistic is actually the reason for, um, you know, moving into this this property that we're at now, the Mystic Manor, where what we do is basically it's um, we have retreats. Uh, so anyone anyone out there coming interested in coming can check out optimistic.tv and, you know, see see some videos we put together with the trailer for this new show and all about the retreats. And basically what, you know. Folks come on a Monday. We have, you know, chef prepared vegan meals throughout the week. We do workshops, you know, several days of workshops, uh, mm. different healing modalities. Dr. Joe Dispenza's uh, one of his right hand women or works closely with him. Kimboda takes them through a Dr. Jo whole Dr. Joe thing. I spend a day with people. Um, actually, if any of your people ended up coming, you we would have to get. You, I would love yeah. to get you here to come. Let's and go, you guys. Day. That would how, be cool. how many people need to join us for me to show up here? You know what? Uh, it, any amount we could figure cool. that out. I mean, okay. we have we could do a full week even of like just your people. That would be awesome. Um, or multi, just depending. You know, we have we basically I scheduled through from July 2019 to July 2020 111 spots. So three rooms each week uh, are here at the Mystic Manor, and you spend a full week. And um, yeah, I spend a full day with you. Then we we also you're a guest on the Positive Head podcast one day. We then live tape with Optimistic. It's, you know, I do an opening monologue. There's a live visionary artist painting. We have the main interviewee. There's, yes. a, there's a live audience of 30 or so people. You it's were in a the production. last live taping. It's a great production. And, uh, and then we bring the retreat guests out that have been there the whole week. That's their last night when yeah. we record that. Bring them out to share a little bit about their week or ask a question of me and whoever the, that week's interviewee is. Mm. And then conclude with a live musical performance. So we'll be releasing Optimistic uh, in, tw in 2020. First, you know, I said foot in the mystic manor on january 1st 2020 and we're planning to release the first episode on january 1st i, I set first january tw first 2019 2019 i was here first time i ever I saw was like that's your future self yeah, talking, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. and then january 1st 2020 <laughs> we're planning to release yeah. the first episode and then just continue to release them weekly from there so amazing yeah, yeah you're doing such good work yeah and it was really like talk about synchronicity as coming together yeah a couple was, different friends on the same day yes, men yes, mentioning yes. and I'd, I'd never heard of you it's so funny and um you'd never heard of me and like that's kind of the richness of life it's like you guys no matter what you're doing if you think you know it all you've experienced 
experienced it all. Nope. Yep. You haven't because yep. there's all kinds of surprises yep. that spirit, God, universe, higher intelligence, however you want to describe it, uh, is bringing to you, man. And um, can I talk about wellness please, horse for a positive please. head? Yes, absolutely. So you guys, Brandon's personality and his ability to articulate thought and the way that he really pours his heart and soul into this mission, you know, I really feel it. And I'm the same way. You know, I, I really believe we're in, definitely brothers from a from a from another alien from a cosmic mother. <laughs> so I, I believe in this this discovery process of physical and emotional intelligence, and I'm sure we've had many of the same guests um, on our shows. You know, I think I saw that you had Corey Allen as a guest. Mm-hmm. And, oh yeah. So so a couple so times. so we explore this not from a place of anything else other than what's real, what's really going to help us, and so if that sparks your interest. Um, add us to your queue along yeah. with along with Positive Head. It's Wellness Force Radio, wellnessforce.com. Um, there's also, we talked about breathing. If you guys want to get a free breath work that has been six months curated, I would love to give that to your audience. Mm. It's wellnessforce.com forward slash M21. It's morning 21. Cool. 300 guests. I put together all the main juicy things that will actually help us Beautiful. start our day. Uh, and breath work, it's free. It's in there. It's your gift. So cool. from my heart to yours, like, thank you. Love thank you, man, for having me on the show. And, and I know my audience is loving you too. So yeah, deep yeah. bow to who you are and, and, and how you're serving the world. You are a beautiful reflection. So thank you for showing up. And that's one of the things on this journey I'm more and more excited about is I, you know, the, the more I continue to level up the, the, the clearer, the reflections that I call in. And it's like, and that's how, truly how I view it as people come into my field and, oh, oh, I synchronistically landed here today, you know? And then I'm like feeling into this person. I'm like, oh, well, I can see why, like what a close reflection you are. And so, um, yeah, we're, we're doing it together and I so applaud all of your work as well. And Thank I look you. forward to continuing to co-create together. I completely agree. And I'm excited for the other mysteries that I didn't know were going to happen in 2020 to unfold yes. <laughs> to actually unfold. We hear that word unfolding and I'm like, it's really true because we can't see it until it yep. comes to the other side. Everything in so. divine timing. Thanks man. Till next time. Journey well, everyone love you all so, so much. And if you're feeling the call to come for a week retreat style, mystic manner immersion, remember to go now and book your time to speak with me directly about stepping into the optimistic vortex at Callenly.com forward slash talk with Brandon while there are still spots left. Otherwise, I look forward to co-creating magic with you at the Mystic Manor.